Three. Here. No, I'm not a writer. Okay. Hello, peeps. Welcome back to the show. I don't know every time I start this show, I always have to adjust the volume because when I, it's like I'm, I start to record and I'm listening to the podcast that I recorded and earlier, right? And every time I'm going to start a new episode, a new, uh, a new episode for the show, I have the volume all the way up so I can hear myself. So when I start the episode, it's like, hello, it's like loud, loud, super loud. So every time, for some reason, if you guys notice that when I start to show, sometimes I look down, that's because I'm adjusting the volume because I can, it's like, I can hear myself super loudly on the, on my headphones. So welcome to Bold Talk by Joe. Thank you for being, thank you for, uh, thank you for being here. You're not here. Here we go. Here we go. Thank you for listening. Thank you for joining me on this uh, next episode here. I wanted to talk about housing. I just. Some of those things, some of the things that I've, that I noticed is, for instance, the housing in Arizona is, is, is cheaper than in some places, right? And uh, we were, we were talking about, I don't know if I talked about this in the podcast or not, but we were talking about uh, uh, houses in Detroit, Michigan, right? Having invest, invest in buying houses. And I found out that these houses were like from a dollar to a thousand dollars, right? If you buy them in Michigan, in Detroit, Michigan, because Detroit, Michigan is now like basically looks like a wasteland, unfortunately, and uh, it's just houses destroyed, and and uh, you know when the jobs were lost there and the crime went up, and I mean it was it, it made this huge ripple effect, right? Because they were they were like making cars before they were like huge, right? Detroit, man, come on. And um, when stuff started closing down and stuff started moving out of there, there was no more work for people there in Detroit. So what did people do? It's like, well, violence got out of hand. People started stealing. People started doing things. People started getting upset. I mean, and, and, and at the end, like these neighborhoods are destroyed. These houses are destroyed. So we looked into it, right? And we're like, well, we can buy a house. And uh, uh, we read it. Uh, we read a thing from there saying that you can buy the house in auction. You know, like I said, they go from a dollar to a thousand dollars is the highest, I believe. I can't remember exactly. But if you buy it, you have a certain amount of time that Michigan gives you to repair this house and and uh, bring it back to code. So some of these houses are some of them are destroyed, like in pieces, right? And you basically have to knock them all down and start all over. The reason why they're doing this is because they want people, investors and people like us, normal people, to be able to buy a house and to fix it up and to re to get Detroit going again, right? That's part of the of the process. And so when you buy the house, you have a certain amount of time to get it back into code. The problem is is that nobody's buying these houses because I was telling my wife, well, say we buy two houses for five hundred dollars and we fly over there and we fix them all and we hire contractors. And they're going to be the only two houses in the neighborhood. And what are we going to do? We can't live there. So what's going to happen? People are going to live in them. And who the hell, who the hell is going to rent these houses? Hey, I have an Airbnb in Detroit. You can go ahead and stay. And two houses are really nice. And the whole neighborhood is destroyed. And people are robbing each other and, you know, stealing shit. So it just, at the end, it wouldn't work out, right? But we really thought about it. and. Uh, this last weekend we were list we were watching a movie, and uh, man, I can't remember. It's called, I think it's called Barbarian, and uh, it's that guy from Jeepers Creepers. And uh, basically, I think it's in Detroit, and it's in that neighborhood. And I guess the the movie's based on this lady that used to live there, that was born there and raised there, and she never left. When everybody left, she never left, but she was kind of like a, a, like a monster, right? And 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 she would kidnap people and and feed them. She would have breast milk and give give them their her breast milk and it was just weird it was just weird and this this person this this person with boobs had um super like natural like super great strength supernatural strength and she'll, she'll rip you apart with her hands or whatever that thing was but uh 
the movie was based off on that. So basically, these people went and bought those houses down there, and they got them all done, right? They bought them, they bought the property, and there's tunnels underneath these houses. And this person, like, would uh, go into your house, basically, and then will we'll kidnap you, take you, and then you were her baby, right? And we were like, holy shit, good thing we didn't buy a house down there because it, something like that could happen. So, I mean, it was crazy how we were talking about it, like, month, a month ago. And then we watched this movie and we were like, holy shit, this is what this movie's about. It's about these houses down there. So I, I have this thing about, uh, I love the outdoors. I love the houses that are in acres in the middle of the forest. And I love places like that. I lived in Chicago for a very long time. And uh, I love Chicago. It's beautiful. Pretty soon I'm going to have some pretty cool decor. Uh, that's my favorite city. And uh, New York is there, man. But it's nothing like Chicago. Chicago is just beautiful. Uh, everything about it, uh, besides the violence, of course, and we're not talking about the violence, but everything else is just, it's just different. You know, the, the fans, the sports fans, and everybody's just like into it, right? Arizona's different. People always say, well, you know, the sports fans in Arizona, they're flakes. We have to remember, we haven't had a team like that. I mean, these Chicago and all these places, New York, they've had teams forever since you know, 1920 or whatever. Arizona's not like that. Arizona's a melting pot for everybody from different cities. So it takes a little bit of time to to switch over to the teams, right? Especially when a team sucks, it takes a little bit of time. It's not that we're shitty fans. It's just that, you know, there, there's not enough fans. The problem is that a lot of fans are from different cities. They're from New York, from Chicago, from Wisconsin, from everywhere. So it's, it's not the same. Those people still follow their teams because they grew up with that, right? They grew up with that kind of, uh, they grew up since they were little, and their grandparents and everybody, that's the teams they follow, right? Green Bay Packers and all this stuff, you know, all these old teams. So it's not that we're shitty. It's just that, hey, we need some time. Once people live here for a certain amount of time, they're like, yeah, go Cardinals, you know, whatever. But, um, yeah, the Cardinals are not doing so good. And I'm not going to do a sports podcast, even though I've gotten a lot of requests to do more sports podcasts, um, which I'm thinking about it, maybe like a bonus. But, uh Right now, I'm focusing on this. But anyways, I have this thing about houses, right? And uh, I want a house that looks like a farm and like the old siding, like the wood siding on the, on the house and the, and the green and the big trees. And we look around all the time. I look around and there's so many houses out there, Mississippi and Iowa. And these houses are like, farmhouses and acres a bunch of acres and they're like fifty thousand dollars and they're beautiful like kind of like victorian style homes and i'm like man i wish i could live there but after i we see a lot of scary movies in this house and after seeing all of these scary movies why the hell are all the scary movies like filmed in new york and like outskirts right the suburbs of new york or new jersey or i mean it's these houses are possessed and there's dolls and these dolls are demonic. And I don't know, man. I don't know if I could live in a house like that, I guess. You know what I mean? Like, I would be afraid of the noises. Um, I lived in the, this place, uh, a horrible story, by the way. I just, I don't want to get super into it. But I had a chance to live for a few days in this house in Elgin, Illinois. And that was an old house, like super old. And I could not sleep at all because I can hear the boards making noises and they had a you know had a, a basement and the basement was dark there was no lights there was I mean it was just I couldn't do it I just I was freaked out man so I moved out right away after like the week uh, it's just a just a horrible story and I mean but it's just kind of what I feel like I feel like if I move in we move into the house like that yes fifty thousand dollars and you live in a house in a farm like the movie Signs, right? It's really cool out in the middle of nowhere and peaceful and green and beautiful and you have all the seasons. But is this freaking Chucky gonna show up and like try to get me or these freaking things gonna try to feed me breast milk? I mean, I don't know. I mean, I just don't know. But I, I love to look at these houses. I think those houses are the most beautiful ones there is and those, those, those states, those cities, the states. I think I kept saying cities, uh, states, whatever. Those states are beautiful, right? It rains, it snows a lot, so it's always green. It's super humid, I'm sure. But, uh, you know, it's beautiful. It's beautiful out there. You know, in Illinois, it's, it's beautiful. Everything over there is on the, on the suburbs is uh, basically a village or a town. And all the houses are inside 
the, like basically the forest, right? Because it's just a big forest, and uh, it's it's great, right? These these houses, some of these houses have like restaurants on the bottom, and the top floor is like an apartment or uh, I mean, it's like Victorian homes. But the bottom of it is a restaurant, and the top of it is a like an Airbnb or a or a two bedroom with a kitchen. It's really cool, man. It's it's just a different lifestyle compared to Arizona. One things one of the things that I'm glad that we have now is that we bought our house brand new. So there's no ghosts running around here. Or there was no like ancient burial of something or like a pet cemetery or anything like that. We live in a farmland. This was all farm. Uh, it's always been farms and they, they sold the farm and they, they build on the farm. So it's under a farmland. And uh, I mean, it's pretty cool. I mean, I feel safe that nothing's running around the house or spirits, even though I don't know if I believe on any of that stuff. But uh, watch the lights are going to like start flickering. But I just, I feel more comfortable like this. You know what I mean? Like nobody's lived in it. I'm the first one. Uh, we're, we're the first ones. And uh, I don't have to freak out about any of this stuff. But I mean, those houses are beautiful, man. And they're so affordable. And it like if I had some kind of money, like if I had, you know, $300,000 in the bank, I would go buy this house's cash. I would go buy one of those houses cash for like a, have it like to an Airbnb for other people and have it for us for like a summer home to, to leave the desert, you know, but uh, it's not possible. I don't have that kind of money. Eventually, if you guys keep supporting me, supporting the show, maybe, maybe, right? Maybe when I'm like 80 and I have a lot of followers and listeners. Yeah. So come on guys. So <laughs> anyway, so yeah, I think these houses are, um, I think they're beautiful, man. I think these houses in different different states like that are they're just amazing. Um, I love the way they look, even though those pictures are taken obviously in the summer. But uh, it's it's great just to change the view once in a while. That will be if I had money, that's what I would be doing is buying a cabin and buying different houses in different states that are affordable. You know, I wouldn't. I'm not gonna go buy million dollar homes, but a house like that that's like a farm style home, an old home from like 1930, 40, 50, whatever. That's it's Victorian looking. It's it would be great. It would be awesome. Um, I, I don't know if I want to have sheep or cows. I'm not a farmer, and I don't know how to grow hay or do any of that stuff. So it would just be green. It would be green with a lot of room, have family reunions, and all that kinds of stuff. That's like one of my dreams, right? For everybody has goals, and that's one of mine to have a cabin somewhere and retire and do my podcast and have a cigar shop. That's that's my goal in life. That I'm. I'm I'm sharing you guys what I want to do if I ever make good money is not work for anybody and uh, just go buy a house out in in the uh, up in the in the forest, nice big cabin, and uh, just be normal. Do my podcast in there, and uh, maybe have a part time job in, in the town or something, and uh, just relax out there, stress free, and uh, you know, just the city life is not for me. I was not uh, raised in uh, the forest. I was not raised in the, uh, any of that. I was, you know, I'm from the city, always been a city. But since I uh, became 18 years old, I had this fascination for backpacking and going to the, going to the forest and doing all kinds of stuff. So, you know, that's one of my things. And eventually put a cigar bar where I can uh, have you know, sell cigars and have people come and join me and and uh that would be my business till you know so i'm super old and i die basically so yeah guys so if you guys are uh are into looking at cool stuff just look at those houses you know look at these these beautiful houses that there's out there they're super cheap and then if you're like in california or anywhere else where like the houses are a million dollars and then you look at a different state and these houses are like fifty thousand. And you're like, oh, my God, they're beautiful inside. You know, they were well made back then. They were different than they are now. This house is cheaply made. You know what I mean? Compared to those beautiful, you know, beautiful homes. So, yeah, guys, you know, just wanted to share that. I, hopefully you guys like this episode. And uh, before I forget, uh, check out my shirt. It's uh, Jittery Dog Coffee. I This is one of the sponsors of the show, one of the, one of the supporters. Uh, we're collaborating together jury.coffee.com you guys can uh, go check them out they're a local business family owned business uh they're really good people 
and uh, we're working on some stuff together here for the show. So uh, hopefully you guys like this episode. Like I said, until next time, peace.